Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Zach. Oh, I hope everybody been having a great Shabbat today. Uh, this is your brother Kasafo. You got anything you want to say, brother Kasafo? Peace be with you all. Shabbat shalom. Uh, do you want to give the update now, or do you want to give it? Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, just a friendly reminder: we have the Feast of Purim coming up. Well, it'll start Tuesday night of February 14th. That's when it starts, and it's a two-day feast, so it's going to continue until the night comes on Thursday, February 16th. So in regards to work, you wanna seek to get that time off, may I be gracious to grant it and make our provisions for the feast beforehand so that we can celebrate it together. And you have the playlist online as well called Feast of Purim, so you can get edification on how to keep the feast. All right. Amen. Praise the high. We hope everybody gets to keep the Feast of Purim. If it's your first time, please reach out to us so that we can go over everything that is done on Purim. Uh, but for everybody else, I hope you enjoy the feast. Uh, we have a great lesson today. Um, why are you tempted? And we want to go into elaborate detail by the grace of Allah to really get people to understand why they come and why certain temptations come to people um, so that they can truly understand to be able to overcome it. To understand the question, why are you tempted? The person has to be entirely honest with themselves. They have to truly want to see it themselves and they have to see who they truly are. They have to look at themselves from an outside perspective. Wanting to see what makes you fall and understand why it makes you fall. And get into the place where you understand that for temptation to come, there must first be a root for the sin to grow upon. Okay. Uh, Costa, can we read um, Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 15? We're going to read the, um, the very beginning of it. Then we're going to jump through Apocalypse of Paul in different areas of different chapters so that we can piece it all together so that we don't have to read the whole entire um, excerpt. Go ahead, Brother Kassam. Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 15. And he said to me, look again down on the earth and watch the soul of an impious man going out of the body. All right, so we're seeing a man that's dying. So he's dying, his soul is coming out of his body and we're gonna see what transpires at that moment. Um, we're going to jump down a little in the Apocalypse of Paul, if you're following along. We're going to jump down a little and see what happens. Um, go ahead, Brother Kassam. And after these things, there came at the same time the holy angels and the malign, and the soul of the sinner and the holy angels did not find a place in it. Right. So the holy angels and the malign angels came to it to to pretty much check out and say, Okay, what spirit is this person operating in? What spirit is within this person that they've been operating in throughout their life? And whatever spirit it is that identifies with you, that spirit has place in you. So when we talk about truly overcoming something you have to truly overcome it for yourself because you can hide the things in the earth you can hide things from man and it may be something going on within you mentally that nobody can see because you don't act upon it but if it's in you then it's going to be seen and that's the things that we truly 
I want to, of course, some things are seen and they're evident by men's actions or whatever the case is, but the things that are hard to see mentally are the things that are going to catch a lot of people when it comes time for them to perish, when it comes time for them to die and to truly be judged. And these are the things that we want to alleviate. These are the things that we want to alleviate now so that it doesn't hinder us from getting to where we want to go. Because everybody here, your objective should be to make it into the kingdom. This is why we're all here. This is why we're all learning. This is why we're all pushing forward. And we're all, we're all here because we want that information. We want what is going to get us to where we want to go. And right now, we have to focus on the things that are within us, within our heart, within our mind. Um, Brother Casa, can we read Apocalypse of Paul 16? And we're going to jump into it. Um, if everybody has the notes, um, please go and get the notes. Casa, the notes on the website? Yes, they are. All right. Um, please go to www.hebrewreaders.com. Download the notes for the lessons, and it, it'll help you to follow along. Um, go ahead, Brother Casa. Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 16. When, therefore, they had arrived at the power, when he started to enter heaven, a labor was imposed upon him above all other labor. All right. So we're going we're gonna to see the impious man after he died. So the righteous and the malinge angels came to him after he died. And then on his way through the firmament, going up to the first heaven, because he has to travel up unto heaven, he made it through the firmament. And literally right before he comes to the first heaven, they try him again. Okay. Go ahead, Brother Casa. Error and oblivion and murmuring met him. And the spirit of fornication and the rest of the powers. And said to him, Whither goest thou, wretched soul? And darest thou to rush into heaven? Hold, that we may see if we have our qualities in thee since we do not see that thou hast a holy helper. So you see, they're looking for their own qualities within you. So it doesn't matter if you're acting upon it or not. If it's in you, then it's in you. And that's why when Yache said it's harder for, a, um, what do you say, for a, a camel? <laughs> the eye of a needle. Right. When he was actually talking about rich man, he said the kingdom of heaven is a straight path that only one man can go at a time. Where you literally, you have to be in a single file. Because you have to literally rid of all evil within you. And there's no other way. That's why Yahshua say any man that cometh any other way is a thief and a liar. We have to do it his way or it's not going to happen at all. Now, we see that he's being checked again to see if the qualities of those malign spirits are in him, right? And you see he didn't have a holy helper because when the angels, the righteous angels came to him when he first died and they seen that they didn't have a place within him, then they left him and they went ahead and left him to travel on his own because he never traveled with them. He never walked with them. Now, we're going we're gonna to keep on going because it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to progress. We're gonna, it's going to start coming. Everything's going to start coming together. All right. Now, it said that error and oblivion met him. All right. Error, error is a mistake. And we all make mistakes. All right. Everybody makes mistakes. We all fall. Right. A righteous man falleth, but he gets back up. Right? We all make those mistakes, but the difference is, is that oblivion was with him as well. Now, oblivion is the state of being unaware or unconscious of what is happening. So he was making errors, he wasn't repenting, and he also was oblivious and unaware or unconscious of what was going on within him and around him. 
really within him, which is more important. So these things are, are very important that we actually understand what's going on within us. What is causing us to fall? What's causing us to be led in certain directions? We have to understand ourselves and what's going on within us and the things going on around us so we can be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, cleaving unto the things that are good and abstaining from those things that lead us and cause us to fall. Uh, can we read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, so that we can understand what we need and, and what the scriptures actually attest that we are supposed to be walking in? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all I get in, get understanding. So get wisdom, right? Wisdom is the understanding spirit. Wisdom reveals things, right? And to get wisdom, there's certain things that you have to do to be able to get wisdom. Uh, what lesson did we go over that as far as wisdom? Because I don't want to dive too much into that. Um. We did lessons on the Holy Spirit. There's a playlist on the Holy Spirit. Right. The whole playlist is fine. Just yeah. the, the playlist on the Holy Spirit, and you can understand what it takes to get wisdom. And that's a whole nother thing in itself. But with all that getting, get understanding. Right? So if it pertains to your soul and salvation, you need to understand it. Those are the things a man and woman should understand. Understanding the law and the fruits of the spirit and then circumventing your heart to agree with them both. Not making your own way in pride, but walking in humility, departing from the things that are against the law and truly wanting to do it in your heart. Truly wanting to do the things of Elohim in your heart. I don't want to harp on it too much right now, but we're going to, we're going to get into it. Um, can we jump to Job 28 and 28, please, Brother Cousin? Sure. Job 28, verse 28. And unto man, he said, behold, the fear of Ahaya, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So the fear of Ahaya is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. This is the understanding that has to be embedded in our hearts. Knowing that the things Allah wants us to do is good and righteous. And it's the desires of our own heart that lead us away from that. All right? So we really have to examine ourselves. We have to truly take the time and truly see when we fall, what led us to fall. And if we fall in something continuously, why are we falling into it continuously? What is there in us that is a allowing us to fall? What desire do we have that literally keeps leading us back down the same path, knowing the outcome of the desire, knowing where we're being led, knowing that even if it's a, a reaction, why are you reacting like that? There's something in you. There's something that is triggering that reaction. So you have to, to analyze and understand, okay, this is, this is triggering me. Why is this triggering me? What is in me that is causing me to, to react that way? You have to find those answers. Now, going back to the Apocalypse of Paul, now, these spirits were the spirits that the man was walking upon in the earth. The, the, the error, the oblivion, the murmur, and the fornication, and all the rest of the powers. And in his case, he never seeked Elohim nor the right ways, putting his own ways in the forefront, for this was his mindset. Um, let's read his mindset. In Apocalypse of Paul, we're jumping down. It's in Apocalypse of Paul 15. We're a little ways down in the in the um, chapter. Go ahead, Brother Castle. Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 15. I know nothing else in this world, 
I eat and drink and enjoy what is in the world. For who is there who has descended into hell and ascending has declared to us that there is judgment there? Now, I know, I know this mindset may seem very far-fetched for many of us. But the truth of the matter is that many of our works declare this mindset, though we may not say it with our mouths. And on the other hand, it's said by some. This mindset is actually said by some people, whether in a joke or in seriousness. Because some people joke about things, they may say things in a joking manner, but it's truly professing what's in their heart. And that's something that we need to examine, especially for a believer or one that is striving to believing. Now, when growing, as Proverbs 4 and 7 stated that we, that we just read, that with all our getting, get understanding, especially for the things that pertain to the soul and salvation. Let's not be of a high mind. As we're learning and growing to look down on others that may be struggling or lifted up in head knowledge. Um, can we read Ecclesiastes 7 and 16, please? Sure. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16. Be not righteous over much. Um, be not righteous over much. All right, we're going to start right there. Um, can we read 2 Corinthians 10 and 12 so that we can understand what that actually is talking about. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not to make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Right. So count yourself a part of the number as if you're chosen or better shows a lack of charity right and charity is essential for us to making it to the kingdom so to be righteous over much that means that you're lifted up in righteousness or you feel um or you're over zealous um when it comes to people that are are everyone you can be overzealous toward everybody and you can feel like you have this this understanding or you or your walk is or, or whatever the case is there's so many different facets that can go into that but for us we don't want to walk in that because it shows that we have a lack of charity towards other people um keep on going brother casa neither make thyself over wise why shouldest thou destroy thyself All right so you're destroying yourself by one, being righteous over much, and two, making yourself overwise. And overwise is head knowledge. So seeking head knowledge shows a lack of faith in Elohim. Because if you feel the need to have to understand all these different things, then you have a lack of faith in Elohim that actually leads you and gives you everything that is needed for you. Okay? It's not about head knowledge. It's about humility and knowing the things that are needful for saving your soul. That's the true wisdom. Um, can we read Romans chapter 12, verse 16, so we can understand that? Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. All right. So walk in simplicity with a single eye and don't give in to guile or pride, but walk humbly, right? Be of the same mind one toward another, right? Be lowly, walk in charity. Can we go back to Ecclesiastes 7 and we're going to read 17, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 17. Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Right. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Right. 
So in this case, he's talking about walking in oblivion, just like we spoke about how the man was walking in the apocalypse of Paul. Because walking in oblivion is the state of being unaware or unconscious of what's happening, right? So we have to be not over much wicked, neither be that foolish, because walking in oblivion is foolish and you're over much wicked because you're literally doing it ignorantly and you're not trying to learn what's right and that's foolish okay let's continue in um ecclesiastes ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 18 it is good that thou shouldest take hold of this yea also from this withdraw not thine hand so this is something that we're supposed to keep okay we're supposed to keep away from those things, right? And that's what's going to keep us. Okay? Go ahead and finish, Casa. For he that feareth Allah shall come forth of them all. For he that feareth Allah shall come forth of them all. So the person that fears Allah is going to get through those things. He's going to overcome those things. Right? So for he that fears Allah shall come forth from them all. He's not going to operate in those any longer. He's going to come out of that of that era and that oblivion. Okay. Uh, let's jump over to Ecclesiastes seven and twenty five, please. Okay. Ecclesiastes seven and twenty five. I apply in my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. Now, when we said that with all that getting, get understanding, this is what Solomon did. He applied his heart to know and to search. So he applied his heart to know what was going on within himself and also other things. And he searched. He searched within himself. So that he can understand, okay, what's going on within me? Why am I operating like this? Why am I speaking like this? Why am I thinking like this? And he sought out wisdom so that he can understand and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly. So he wanted to understand, okay, why is that working against me? Why am I working against myself? Why am I being led down a path knowing that it's not the right way? Even of foolishness and madness, because you feel mad when you keep going and doing the same thing over and over, knowing that it ain't good for you to do. It becomes madness. It's like, why can't I stop? We have to examine ourselves the same way as Solomon. We have to apply our hearts. Only then will things be revealed to us through the Holy Spirit to truly be able to see ourselves and what lives within us. Because it's Allah that reveals these things to us so that we're able to, to get through them. And if somebody corrects you or brings something to your understanding, even if you don't agree with it, examine it. Because a lot of times there's truth in it. Though they may be struggling themselves or have their own problems, it's easier to see somebody from the outside than to look at yourself with inwardly. So don't take it lightly or lighthearted when somebody actually says something to you about something. And in humility, take it and examine it and grow from it. And don't get prideful and try to reject it because you don't want it to be or try to to under undercut that person because they have their own struggles that's that's not going to help you and it's not helping them either um let's jump over to ecclesiasticus 3 uh, 37 and 27 please no problem ecclesiasticus chapter 37 verse 27 my son prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it, and give not that unto it. Mm. Now, 
we have to we have to convince ourselves it says prove thy soul in thy life you have to convince yourself by your works that these spirits have no place in you i'm not talking about being delusional and walking in oblivion i'm talking about truly overcoming in the heart and no longer finding comfort or pleasure in the things that are not of Elohim. It says, see what is evil for it. Having your eyes open and truly wanting to see, hey, what's evil going on with inside of me? Or what evil is trying to lead me to do something that I don't want to do? And if it's trying to lead me to do what I don't want to do, what has place in me where it can play on that that it can pull me in that direction we have to apply our hearts that we be not ignorant of things that pertain to our souls and what lives in us getting rid of those spirits that cause us the error and that allows temptation to impact us is key can we read james chapter 1 verse 12 please sure James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So it said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Can we get the definition for endureth, Brother Casa, please? It's G5278. It means to stay under behind or stay behind that is remain figuratively to undergo that is bear trials have fortitude persevere abide endure take patiently suffer tarry behind All right. so blesses the man that endures temptation blesses the man that undergoes it blesses the man that bears it because we have to get to the place where temptation doesn't move us. Temptation, it may come, but it has no place in it. You know how easy it is for certain things, like something that you're not struggling with, though you can see the temptation, but it's very easy because you don't have no desire for it. And it's like, oh, okay. I see that temptation, but it's not affecting me at all. But then you have the temptations that come and it becomes an inward tug of war. Where it's like, okay, do I do it? Do I don't? I don't. I know I don't want, I'm not supposed to do it, but I'm, I want to do it. And that's the temptation. That's the one that you need to be like, okay, why does it have a grip on me in such a way? How is it able to pull me and lead me down a path that I don't want to go? Or do you want to go? And that is the part that we truly have to understand is that you do want it. It's actually the angel of righteousness that's actually speaking to you, telling you not to do it but it's the desire of your heart that's leading you to do it and the evil spirits know it because they can see within you they know when they have place in you because they can see themselves in you just like they did in the apocalypse of paul so you will notice that those temptations of the ones that have a place in you occur more often than the ones that don't because they're literally attacking you it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna make more sense as we continue going. Um, can we continue in James chapter one, uh, verse thirteen, please? Yes, James chapter one, verse thirteen. Let no man say when he is tempted, "I am tempted of Allah." I am. For Allah I am cannot be tempted with evil; neither tempteth he any man. All right, now this is key. Now knowing that temptation cometh by the devil, and his workers only and that Allah can't tempt nobody with evil. 
Let us undergo the temptation and strength of our hearts, renewed and cleaving unto what's right, knowing that it's the devil that's tempting us. Yes, Allah will allow us to learn a lesson based off of our own decision. And yes, Allah will deliver us if we want to be delivered. If we're patient and we sit there and undergo the temptation, Allah will deliver us. But nine times out of ten, our own desire is pushing us or whatever spirit that is within us. It's pushing us to do it. The temptation comes and it's because we want it that causes us to go in that direction. So it should be easier understanding that, hey, that's the devil. That's the devil that's tempting me. I know that has nothing to do with how I am. I'm going to stay away from that because I already know who I'm serving if I go over there and I and I give in to that. And that's just the struggle. That's just in the process of growing and strengthening is withstanding the enemy, withstanding the devil. Now, the goal is not to have that spirit in you at all where that temptation doesn't affect you at all. Now, but that's a process. It takes some time to get there. But knowing that that's possible, you have a plateau. You have an example or a peak that you know you need to get to, that you should be striving for. Can we continue in James chapter 1, verse 14, Brother Cousin? Sure. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. And Can you read that again? But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Every man is tempted. Everybody. Every one of us. Everybody goes through temptations. Even Yache went through temptations. And he had to overcome them all. And it's the same thing because we're no different than our, than our Savior. We're no different than Yache. And in, in this life, we have to overcome the same temptations. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of its own lust. Now, remember we were just talking about how our own lust literally leads us, right? And all the devil knows he needs to do is entice us because these evil spirits already know when they have a place in us, they can see it. So all it takes is for you to be enticed. And if you're weak in that area, it's going to lead you away because that's what you want. You're drawn away of your own lust because that spirit has a place in your heart. Now, instead of putting the Band-Aid on it, we're not going to put a Band-Aid on it and deal with the actual act. We're going to deal with the root, which is within your heart. And if we deal with the root, then we deal with the action that comes with the actual, the actual, the root of it. We deal with the root of it. So we're, we're not dealing with action anymore because if we, if we sit there and circumvent our heart and actually understand why and what and, and understanding what to do and truly making a choice and saying, Hey, I don't want to give in to that anymore. I don't want to give in to that spirit anymore. I don't have pleasure in that spirit anymore. I don't have pleasure in those acts anymore. Then that's when you can truly change. That's when you will start being strengthened. Because if a brother Casa, what's the scripture? If a man have um um the one you told me today. Yeah, the seer. Thank you. Chapter 8, verse 7, it said, And he gave each one free choice. If one wants to do good, he will be helped. And if one wants to do evil, a path will be opened for him. So if you want to do good, you're going to get help. Allah is going to help you. 
because we know who Yache is, and we're gonna go into who Yache is. We're literally about to go into it. But if a man wants to do evil, a path will be open for him, because he's gonna be drawn away of his own lust. And Allah is not gonna stop you. You have that choice, but it's a choice. And we all have to understand that it's a choice that we're making every time that we choose to be drawn away. You can't say, I'm, yeah, you're struggling. You're struggling with making a choice. You're not struggling with the act itself. You're not struggling with the reaction. You're not struggling with the, with the mindset. You're struggling with the choice. You're struggling making the choice. So it's the heart. It's not the action. Can we continue in James 1 and 15, Brother Cousin? Sure. James chapter 1, verse 15. And then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. All right. So when that lust is conceived or when you're enticed and you're drawn away with it, it brings it forth sin. Because you're drawn away by your own lust and lust is going to bring forth sin. Okay. And when it's finished, it brings forth death because if you stay in it, you're going to perish because those spirits still got place in you. And in the day of your death, if those spirits still have place in you, then you know what happens based off the apocalypse of Paul. You see the angel of iniquity? The angel of iniquity is enticing you, wanting you to give in to the lust of your heart. Because the spirits can see that they have place in you. But we don't understand that Yahche is a deliverer. We say it, but we don't really understand the inner workings of the spiritual things. And what's going on that the eyes can't see? Now, his name says more than what's on the surface. Like, And this is going to be interesting. I, I hope everybody's listening. Um, can we get the definition of Yache? Um, it's H3467, Brother Cousin. The meaning is a primitive root to be open, wide, or free. To be open, wide, or free. Right now, it may not make too much sense until you really start digging into it. All right, can we read Isaiah 58 and 6 real quick, just for a quick reference? Sure, Isaiah 58 and 6 Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? So to be open, right? That means that you're in a wide area, right? And you see the def other definition is wide. So open and wide, that means that you have a lot of room. And to be free, right? The definition of free means not or no longer confined or imprisoned. The second definition of free is not under the control or in the power of another. So I, I think everybody should be understanding what it's actually referring to. When he was talking about the fast, he was talking about a spiritual fast in Isaiah 58 and 6. And it says, if this not the fast I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, all these things cause you not to be free. And to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. All these things are weighing you down and they're constraining you where you're not open, you're not wide, and you're not free. Right? So to be free means not or no longer confined or imprisoned and not under the control or power of another. I want y'all to remember that. Uh, continue, Brother Castle, with the definitions. That is by implication to be safe. So it makes you safe. Go ahead. Positively to free or succor. So we did the definition of free. The definition of succor is assistance and support in times of hardship and distress. 
just by his name alone, you're learning his character. Assistance and support in times of hardship and distress. That's what Yache does. He comes when you need him the most. He's understanding. He wants all of us to be safe. Go ahead and finish it out, Brother Casa. You're at, at all. Yes, Avenging, defend, deliver, deliverer, help, preserve, rescue, be safe, bring salvation, having salvation, save, savior, get victory. Right. And we all know Yate's going to get the victory because if he's working in you, he's going to get the victory. Remember we talked about the other lesson about him knocking on the door? His name implies overcoming. His name implies ridding of the evil within our hearts and our temples. I hope I hope y'all understand. We we really have to understand who he is. Like truly. To really have that faith and that confidence and that understanding in him. You need to understand who that man is. Um, Brother Casa, go ahead. There was something in particular as you're talking about learning to be confident in the right thing and overcome these things that are in us and understanding who Yach is, that he's going to get the victory. That verse, Philippians 1 and 6, had said, being confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yache Christ. For us where to know, though we may not be where we want to be today, hold on to Yache and know he's going to perform it. Well, Allah Hayim is going to perform it through him in us to not be deterred from working on what we need to work on and not growing wary of the temptations that we have to go through as we're learning ourselves and getting to know who we actually are so that we can actually know what we actually need to do. And it all, interesting, it all comes with humility. That verse in 1 Corinthians 8 and 2, where it said, if a man thinketh he knoweth anything, he knoweth not what he ought to know. Right. So we see, I, we think we know ourselves already. We don't know what we need to know. Right. And we're going to miss it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if we acknowledge and take that time, like see what's going on and then get to know our real selves. Now we're in truth. See, there's more than just us examining. That's why I said, um, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding because wisdom is going to reveal things that you may not see. And, yourself get understanding for the things that you can see so you need both so it does take a lot of humility because you have to understand that there's going to be things that you can't see yourself and you have to be open to receiving receiving it when it comes and that's where the pride comes in a lot of times where it causes people not to be able to receive it because it didn't come from themselves or they weren't able to see it themselves. Amen. That's the first seed. He that heareth the word and understandeth it not, and the devil taketh it away. Right. Now, the goal is to get to the place where temptation has no place in us and understand that it's the devil. We'll eventually sit in the temptation unfazed if we keep gaining understanding of ourselves and renewing our mindset and heart in the ways of Allah will have joy to sit in it and understand and abstain from it so that we don't be led away by our own lust. Uh, can we jump to, you, you, you raise your hand? No, right now, I was... Okay, all right. <laughs> can, we, can we jump to James 1 and 2, please? James chapter 1, verse 2. 
My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now, this is later on in the journey when you're, you're strengthening yourself and you're counting it joy because it's not joyful when you're, when you're struggling, <laughs> right? It's not joyful. But what James is actually referring to is when we're, we're being more seasoned and we're growing in that, in that, um, in that abstaining that we kind of joy because we kind of joy because we're able to see what's going on. And Allah Hayim is strengthening us not to give in to the lust to go after it. So we're rejoicing. You should be rejoicing at that moment. You're like, yo, I'm not moving in that direction. And that is a victory in itself. Even if you're, you're still having a hardship of being pulled, but if you stay, if you stay in it and endure it, that's a, that's a, that's a that's a um what's it called Casa? I don't know. know. It's a joy in itself. I mean, it's a, I, it's a, I, I it's was a going, like, hold on. Yeah, because remember the last lesson in the contentment: the accidents that befall thee receive as good, knowing that nothing happened without Allah. I am right. It's all a blessing, God. It is it's a blessing. We did a. It's a whole lesson. Keys to receive a blessing. It's a blessing yeah. to know to have a iniquity revealed. That's actually Yache working. Right, and even if you fall in it. Because a righteous man falls several times and get us back up. Even if you fall in it and you and you get back up and you get back on the saddle, that's a you should count that joy too. Though you may not be happy you failed, but be happy that you're getting back up to fight again. So count that joy as well. Because it's all a process. You're gonna fall at first. When a baby starts walking. They just don't start walking and start doing the uh, cha cha slide. Like <laughs> sure. they start, they start walking and they falling, and you watching them fall. And you're like, oh, you're like, oh no! Are you trying to catch them with your hands, and you can't catch them. Like they gotta fall. Amen. You have to. You're gonna fall too. But over time, you see how well they walk. They running. Yeah, they develop they, strength. They riding bikes. They they doing things you probably can't even do. Yeah. But it takes time. And that's one thing that that people have to realize. Everybody has their own pace, but it is a choice. You have to remember that it is a choice. And every day that you are being um what's the word? Um it starts with a P. Procrastinating. Procrastinating. Thank you. Okay. Every day that you may be procrastinating, because it is a choice. And a lot of us, we struggle with that procrastination. We're like, okay, I'm going to, I'll do it this one time. Not understanding that that one time may be your last. Or that one time may send you down a spiral that it may be hard to get back out of. Because the more you understand, the harder it is to come out of an iniquity. The more you understand, the harder it is to come out of an iniquity. It's better to be oblivious and to understand it and to come out of it right away then for you to have all the understanding and still procrastinate because it will stick with you and it'll make it hard to come out of it and i pray that none of us get to the point where it becomes hard for us to get out of something because we procrastinate it so make the choice today while there's time truly and actually fix the things that are needed to be fixed and don't allow it to prolong within your vessel because these things are within us. And we know that the evil spirits, if they are able to dwell with us, they bring forth more spirits. They don't just stand there by themselves. They want friends. So they're going to have a whole party in there by the time you finish procrastinating. 
then you got a bigger problem that you got to deal with. Hey Amen. Um, it's interesting from perspective because, as we could imagine, it, it like you talked about, it doesn't feel good messing up and going through this. But for perspective to know, it's actually from the scriptures in John three twenty and twenty one. If we love the light, which is Christ, and we actually want to do truth. Going through this process is showing that because it said in verse 3 and 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So, yes, we could be in evil because we're learning. We have things to grow in. But if we actually love the light, we'll continue coming forward to it so that our deeds can be reproved. It goes on to say in verse 21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deed may be made manifest, that they are wrought in Allah. I am. So it's a good work to come forth, keep coming toward the light to get everything exposed so that Yache can come in and dwell. Amen. All right. I'm ready when you are to continue. James chapter 1, verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Mm -hmm. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Allah Hayyam, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Right, but there's something very specific. If you're asking of Allah Hayyam to understand, what does it say next, Kasim? But let him ask in faith, not wavering. Nothing wavering. Oh, sorry. So nothing. Nothing at all. No part. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So that means that you haven't made a choice. That means that you come... You're like, hey, I want to know, but you really don't want to know because you want to keep doing it. So he's not going to answer you. He's not going to answer you and reveal what it is because you still have pleasure in it and still has a place in your heart. And that's where that faith, when we, when we were speaking about... Um, head knowledge, how it shows it's a lack of faith because head knowledge is easy. Head knowledge doesn't require you to change. You can have all that head knowledge and still inside still be struggling. But Allah says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So Nothing wavering. That means that you can't be still having pleasure in it and then be asking what it is to rid of it from within you. You see the contradiction. It's like, I still want this. I still like it. But at the same time, I want you to deliver me from it. You're not taking any accountability. You, you want a miracle when you actually have to put in the work and make a choice. A miracle can't come but by faith. So if you're lacking the faith, how can a miracle come? How can he help you when you don't want to be helped? And that is getting down to the point of it. Can we continue, Brother Kassam? Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Until not going to receive anything. Operate in that way. And what does it say? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that's why at the very end, it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because 
one thing is contrary to the other and it's double minded so we really have to understand and make a choice if you truly want this and if you truly want to rid of something or to truly understand why something is is operating against you or what's within you then you truly have to want it gone and have no pleasure in it any longer and that's the only way that you're in agreement with Allah that he will actually reveal it to you and help you so if you want this you have to go forward with all your heart because if you don't give a hundred percent dedication you're not going to overcome you have to give a hundred percent not 99.9 a hundred percent this isn't like anything else where you can lollygag your way through or or be lackadaisical you actually have to give everything that you got in this if this is what you truly desire now when you're growing the temptation is more of a struggle as we talked about before warring back and forth and in some instances, the devil will place us in a situation of temptation, trying our faith as we get further along. It's a malicious spirit wanting you to fall, hoping that you fall, praying for you to fall. For we know Ahia can't tempt us, but he understands our struggles while going through our, our states, our different states of ignorance or growing or learning. And also when we're fighting, he understands that we're fighting. So we have to do our due diligence to stop, slow down, look at the possible temptations of the situation, analyze how it may affect us going in that direction or giving into the urge. We're supposed to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, remember. If we walk into a pit that we've seen 10 steps ago, are we really walking in wisdom? And if you didn't see it, examine what blinded you. What stopped you from seeing it? This exact spirit leads us to lean into our own understanding. Can we read Proverbs 3 and 5, Brother Casa, please? Sure. Trust in Ahia with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Now, I know for many of us when in certain scriptures, like we may not understand the correlation of why things are said next to each other, but Ahaya, be gracious. Trust in Ahaya with all thine heart. He says that first. Because it's the lack of trust and belief that actually causes us to lean to our own understanding. Can we get the definition of lean, Brother Casa? It's H 8172. To lean on, trust in, support. Now, if you're trusting in, or you're leaning on, or you're supporting your own understanding, can you trust in Ahaya with all that heart as well? No. They're contrary. They're contrary to one another. All right? So you see, if you're leaning to your own understanding, how you feel ab about maybe the way you, how you feel about something or how you think something should be or what you want, you're not truly trusting in Allah. And the real question is, what's truly leading you and has place in you that you're not trusting in Allah and you're leaning and supporting your own understanding. Can we read Hebrews chapter three, verse, we're going to start at 12, please. Sure. Hebrews chapter three, verse 12. Take heed brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. All right, so we're going we're gonna to touch on unbelief. 
because if you're leaning to your own understanding and not really um, wanting to see things clearly or rightly, it's a spirit of unbelief that's actually attacking you or that has place in you. And in identifying some of these spirits that's working against us, this is one of them that that usually attacks a majority. Um, go ahead, Brother Casa. In departing from the living Allah I am. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. So this is what we're doing. We're exhorting everyone today while there is called today to understand if this spirit may be attacking you or leading you astray or in your heart that you can understand. Go ahead, Brother Casa. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. All right. So that hardens your heart. It hardens your mind. You don't want to hear things because you don't believe it. All right. And many of us, we've, we've our, ourselves experienced it. And many of us have experienced it when dealing or talking to others. That if you don't want to hear something because you don't believe it or you don't want to believe it, the heart gets hardened. It becomes very hard to speak to a person. Or they may say things that undermine what you're saying. Or you may undermine yourself. Because it comes with the territory. The unbelief causes that mechanic, the, me the mechanics of it to, to harden your heart. Because that's how unbelief operates. It doesn't want you to receive it so that you can stay where you are. And a lot of times the unbelief insinuates pride and the pride with the unbelief causes you to lift yourself up. Go ahead, Brother Casa. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Right. So we have to hold fast to Yache. He's the beginning of our confidence. He's the one that allowed us to, to see and to even be at the point that we were at right now. Without him, we wouldn't be here. Go ahead. Verse 15, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Now that clarified it, that it was talking about Yache. He's the beginning of our confidence. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, because hearing his voice and trusting in him, as it spoke of in Proverbs 3 and 5, to trust in the higher with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, if we actually trusted in him, then we wouldn't be walking in unbelief. We wouldn't be walking in our own understanding. We wouldn't harden our heart because we would want to receive it. Go ahead, Brother Casa. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. How right. So some... When they heard something that was correcting them, they did provoke because their heart was hardened and that unbelief entered in because they didn't want to hear it or they didn't want to change because they had pleasure in it. And a lot of times when people don't want to change something, it's because they have pleasure in doing it. And that's, and that's where you should understand that whatever that spirit is, it's in your heart. Because you don't want to let it go. Go ahead, Brother Casa. How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Because their heart was hardened too. Not all the Israelites left Egypt when Moses left. They, they walked after their own understanding and unbelief. Go ahead, Brother Casa. 
But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And that same unbelief came again in the wilderness and hardened their hearts. Go ahead. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, just like the man we've seen in the Apocalypse of Paul, the things that met him was error, oblivion, um, fornication, and murmuring, and the other powers. Many of us, unbelief is going to attest to us and see us when we when we pass. But this is why we're here today, so that we can be honest and grow past these things, so that these things do not hinder us from making it into the kingdom. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. We don't want to be the same professing holiness, but still having the evil spirits dwelling in us, prohibiting us from entering. What excuse can we give in that day? Casa, can we see what was spoken to the impious man and the equal opportunity all, we all received to get it right? Uh, it's an Apocalypse of Paul. It's a little ways down. Apocalypse of Paul. Chapter Six, 16, sorry. Okay. Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 16. Have I put a distance of one day between thee and the just man? Did I not make the sun to rise upon thee as upon the just? But the soul was silent, having nothing to answer. And we don't want to be sitting there having no answer either. Because every opportunity, we all have the same opportunity. Every day the sun rises on us, and there's no distance between a just man and an impious man. There's no difference. It's just a choice. Let us not think that we can't do it or someone else can, but we can't, or that it's too hard to do in this era or too hard to do generally. Like we can't make any excuse. Just because the times are different, every time was different. Every era was different. There were different things going on amongst the, the, the just people all throughout the scriptures. There was something different going on. Just because we have something different going on in the midst of us now, it doesn't give us an excuse to not do what we're supposed to do and to not overcome. Casa, can we read the uh, Shepherd of Hermits, Mandate 12, Chapter 3, Verse 4, please? Sure. Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 12, Chapter 3, Verse 4. I say to him, Sir, these commandments are great and beautiful and glorious and are able to gladden the heart of the man who is able to observe them. But I know not whether these commandments can be kept by a man, for they are very hard. So we all know that the commandments are good, or at least we're getting to understand that the commandments are good and that they're good for us and that they're here to keep us alive and here to keep us from things that are going to harm us. All right. So we see that the commandments are good, but Hermes was doubtful that a man could keep them. Go ahead, Brother Casa. Verse five. He answered and said unto me, If thou said it before thyself that they can be kept, thou wilt easily keep them, and they will not be hard. But if it once enter into thy heart that they cannot be kept by a man, thou wilt not keep them. Look but at that. The mindset. The angel was explaining to Hermes the mindset you have to have to be able to, to overcome. If we don't have that mindset, that we can make a choice and stick to our choice and truly rid of it and not have pleasure in it anymore, then we're not gonna be able to do it. It's a mind state, not even a mindset. It's a mind state. Like you have to be grounded in it. And though you may have your moments of weakness 
you have to remember and be strengthened and find the things that works for you in your time of need because we know Yache. He comes and succors those in their time of need. What are you trusting in him? Or are you trusting in yourself and giving yourself over to your struggle or your lust or what's comforting to you or your desire? That's what it boils down to at the end of the day. Go ahead, Brother Kassan. But if it once enter into thy heart that they cannot be kept by a man, thou wilt not keep them. But now I say unto thee, if thou keep them not, but neglect them, thou shalt not have salvation, neither thy children nor thy household, since thou hast already pronounced judgment against thyself that these commandments cannot be kept by a man. Now, when it says, if thou keep them not, but neglect them, see it's neglect it's not making a choice you're being your your Kasa, what's the p word again i was waiting on you to use it <laughs> i'm sure it was coming with it <laughs> procrastination procrastinating right so <laughs> it's the neglect it's the procrastination that actually hurts people and he says because you neglect it you're not going to have salvation Neither thy children nor thy household. And the reason why he says neither thy children nor thy household is because they're watching you. They're watching you be a hypocrite. They're watching the way that you react. They're seeing you from an outside perspective. And you wonder why your children are picking up things and your wife and your wife is picking up things or the, the children are picking up things from the wife you wonder why that's happening. It's because of the procrastination. It's because of the hypocrisy. And you're being an example, a bad example of a believer in this case. But we're supposed to be a good example of a believer, setting a good example and a good standard and a good tone for everyone within the household. Because the household shapes you. Whatever, wherever you come from, from your household, unless Allah Hayyam deems it to be so and he places something upon you and delivers you from that, you're going to be a product of your environment. And the household is the environment. The household is where people come from and they learn their core fundamental values and beliefs and they walk from there. Now, there are cases where people don't like their household where they came from and they're looking for change. And that's just Allah Hayyam operating in the person to, to lead them to him. But on a clear playing ground, that household or the, the, those of the household that are supposed to be leading it and bring an understanding for the household they hold a major part for the salvation of everyone in the house. And he says, since thou has already pronounced judgment against thyself by saying it's hard, he wasn't going to be able to keep it because unbelief had entered into his heart. And we see even here with Hermes having a conversation with the angel that he actually turned from it and repented from the unbelief. And it's possible for us too. We can make it simple or we can make it complex and into something it's not. Because making it complex keeps you right there and the spirit keeps a habitation within you. We all know the sayings, the you wouldn't understand comment because they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to come out of it. Or it's just so much. We've all heard it.
But if you're truly seeking it, it's simple. It's in your heart. And you're warned against the angel of righteousness, the same one that's supposed to be protecting us and telling us good things to do. A lot of times we're warned against the angel of righteousness because of our own lust. And the angel of righteousness is the one that's trying not to let us give in to the desires of our own heart. The things we're weak at, we have to get stronger in. That's the progression. Some things are easy and some things are hard. The stronger things that affect you or have place in you, you have to convince yourself that that's not a struggle for you. And as I said before, convincing yourself is by your works. But to convince yourself, to convince, again, for the definition, that is to call someone, or in this case yourself, to believe firmly in the truth of something. We have to believe it. We have to come to the place where we believe that we're over it. We believe through our works and through the strength and through our spirit and through our heart that we're, we're done with it and make the choice. We have to convince ourselves. It's possible. That's the confidence we have to get in the Lord. We have to reprogram our mind and our heart. Have to be like, I'm, I'm chilling. Like, you're not going to move me. Like, I, that doesn't have a place in me. The things that are hard for us have to be like the things that are easy for us. That's the compassion. We have to have the mindset that it's it's not getting me anymore. And you have to actually mean it in your heart. That's the compassion we need. That's the dedication. We have to find a way that works for us in the law and stick to it because that's what's going to save us. If we find the things that works for us and we're like, okay, this works for me. I can operate in all facets. I, I, I have a plan for when this happens. I have a plan for that, for when that happens in the process of building. Because you have to go into it with a plan. You have to have things set up for, for if, if this happens, okay, I know what to do. If this happens, I know what to do to get me out of it. If you don't have a plan, you're going to fall, especially in the building stages. When you're literally learning how to walk, you need a plan. And after you get to the, you get further nourished and, and strengthened, then it becomes it doesn't have a place in you. So you're, you're not having to go through a protocol because you're not worn anymore. We have to get to the point where we're not warring against ourselves and that we're not easily enticed. Um, That's it for me. Uh, if anybody has any questions, we're, we're, we're going to open up the chat. Let's see. All right, we opened up the chat. If anybody has any questions, we'd definitely love to answer your questions. Uh, if anybody has any comments, I know this was a very um, serious lesson today do you have anything else brother casa besides while we sit here and wait for everybody i know people got to type it's just good understanding of how to actually 
a process battle. Um, I thought holding the beginning of our confidence or the beginning of our faith, knowing that what Yache started in revealing our sins He's doing it with a purpose to bless us, to be perfect, that he may be formed in us. Because even the way into the kingdom of heaven, only one man can enter in. And I thought, <laughs> there's only one man <laughs> that we right. have to be formed into. Right. Can't have any company with us. It has to be just him and us mm. and his family, the household of his father and us. And holding that confidence that he's going to do it and being willing to go through whatever I have to go through to get to that point. When he talks about the good ground being the one in an honest and good heart that received the seed and brings forth fruit with patience. He talked about heart and not your hearts as in the provocation. Mm -hmm. We know unbelief and pride hardens. So looking at ourselves, the father is the husbandman and Yache is the vine. So the father, he's breaking up our ground. If we harden ourselves, you can't put seed in hard ground. It won't take root. Right. But if we stay soft, which is honest and good and patient, let the ground be broken up. Let him show what he needs to show for us to receive the seed. And just endure it with joy like in everything thank you thank you for showing this thank you for showing that now i'm waiting to see how to overcome this let me go get counsel on it because not everything we understand on our own and that's a part of humility as well yes it is this journey wasn't meant to be I'm going to learn it all myself and he's going to show me everything so that I can get it myself. He actually placed people in place to help just as the people of old had the prophets. They had the teachers. They had the lawgivers. The people in the days of the apostles had the apostles, bishops, deacons, and disciples, and the priests. He's put people in place to help. And we need them because seeing these spirits have place in us. They're affecting us. The James also said, confess your faults one to another. Pray ye one for another. So when these things come to our understanding or we see we're struggling with something, we need to go talk to our counselor because we need the understanding and we also need the prayer to be able to overcome these things. It's interesting just how everything requires humility. It does. So... Amen. All right. I think we're going to call it a wrap. I right. thank you, everybody. We hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. Um, please visit the, the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. Um, if you have any questions or if you have any concerns or anything that um, may come from the lesson, as far as anything that you may be struggling with or um, wanting to get some more understanding or insight of something more specific, um, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We love you all. I keep you all. And may you enjoy the rest of your Shabbat today. Shalom. Shalom.